I'd like to talk a little bit about this Mauser, which uh, kind of went viral or relatively viral last night when I posted a seven second clip of me shooting it. Um, quite a lot of interest in it. So I just thought I'd talk about this really. Uh, I'm not an expert on any particular kind of gun, but um, this this one absolutely fascinated me. Uh, I've always loved surplus, as anybody who watches the channel knows, uh, in terms of history, military history and all the rest of that. I always look at these guns and think, where have they been? What have they done? Who have they, who have they, who have they belong to? Uh, and almost that sort of, you know, if they had eyes, what would they have seen? Uh, and this particular gun is quite interesting. It's, um, as any man as a man will know, um, this will be just like telling you to suck eggs, but this isn't necessarily designed for experts, this video. It's, it's more just for general uh, consumption, really. Anybody uh, who's looking at uh, getting interested in Mausers, I guess. So anyway, this uh, was a Mauser made, a K98 Mauser made by Sarah and Son in Seoul in Germany in 1940. So this was made when Mausers were still being made to very high production standards. Um, Pre-war standards uh, of Mauser production were phenomenal. Uh, absolutely everything that you'd expect from German engineering. Um, they are really works of art. Um, now, the production standards here in 1940 were very, very good. Anybody that made Mausers under contract uh, in Germany made them to exceptionally high standards and uh, Sorenson were meant to be uh, one of the, the kind of premium quality after Mauser themselves. So, um, this gun came to me via an auction. Uh, I saw it in an auction and originally it had got a spotter scope mounted here on this rail here which I've chosen to keep um, and not take away uh, and for various reasons I decided to not have that scope they're not known for their um, pra practicality really so uh, I chose to chose to get rid of that but um, this rifle when it came to me was in a crap state really uh, the barrel was very rough um, it didn't look into too good a state at all it it's what's known as a russian capture so as a russian capture basically when uh, russia swept into germany um in 44 well, 45 really um as you can imagine they literally um captured millions millions of munitions millions of guns uh all sorts of things and they all went into arsenal and they were all um refurbed to, to coin to coin a phrase, I suppose, um, and put into put into deep storage. Now, when they uh, stripped these rifles down in uh, uh, in Russian Russian hands, they literally threw all of the component parts into separate bins of those parts. When they built rebuilt the rifles, they just took a part out and they fitted it. Now, for that reason, it's very very rare to get a Russian capture rifle that is actually matching. It's almost impossible to get to get a Russian capture that's match, matching. Very rare. Now, in a lot of cases, the Nazi marks, the eagles, uh, and the, uh, the weapon stamps have been uh, ground off. In the case of this rifle, I'm very lucky because they haven't been, uh, so they're still in existence. Now, you can tell a Russian capture apart from being completely mismatched by another detail, uh, which is going to be really difficult to show you. But around about here, there's a cross, so it's kind of like across like that um now it's actually meant to signify uh two crossed rifles but it, it doesn't look like that it just looks like a, a dirty gray cross so um if you can see a very distinctive cross on your receiver then the chances are very high that it's a russian capture so this rifle came to me and the first thing i did was set about trying to salvage the barrel and used all sorts of uh, solvents and techniques and good old elbow grease and eventually got the barrel to a pretty good condition. So this barrel, uh, the rifling on it was amazingly sharp, but the, um, the grooves were were in a shit state. They were um, quite pitted, quite bad. Um, surprisingly, I suppose in some ways, this rifle shoots extremely well. Um, as I said, the rifling itself is is good, um, relatively untouched, but as uh, barrels deteriorate and uh, 
rust sets in I suppose it affects them in all sorts of different ways and uh, in terms of this rifle I'm quite lucky that the uh, the rifle is strong and it's uh, still a good shooter um, I would imagine at some point in its life it well it very definitely would have shot corrosive ammunition and um, had it not been cleaned soon after that corrosive ammunition well it's the primers that are corrosive actually the corrosive salts in the primers uh, attract a lot of water and uh, moisture in the air and the, you know rust sets in in pretty much any barrel that's had corrosive uh, ammunition shot through it unless it's cleaned and cleaned quite well relatively soon after it's been fired so in the case of this rifle if it had been in a battle for instance and it had been fired and not cleaned and picked up by the russians and slung in the back of a truck and then taken somewhere uh, and, and put in a pile of other rifles the chances are that it probably would have corroded maybe maybe it happened that way maybe it didn't who knows either way it's it was corroded so having salvaged as much of the barrel as i could um i set about looking at the rest of it and the wood was obviously the stock was mismatched and it was just in a crap state really so i committed the anathema sin uh, and decided that i was gonna uh restore the thing and i thought i'm not going to go half measures i'm going to restore it to the full extent that i possibly can to get it almost as new as i possibly can under the circumstances bearing in mind i was starting from a very low point and actually am i destroying an old rifle well you know some people would say yes i'm going to do a video on that because i've got my own quite strong thoughts on the whole uh you know restoration of rifles and so on and so forth I think if it's you know if it's a one of a kind rifle, it's a very rare rifle. I mean, if it's I don't know a Lee Enfield number four T, or you know an original uh, K ninety eight sniper, if there's such a thing, uh, you, you know you wouldn't piss about with it. You'd leave it as it was in whatever state it was for posterity. That's my opinion. If it's a rifle that was one of a hundred and sixty million, like a, I don't know a Mosin or something, and you want to do what you want to do with it, well, really, is the earth going to stop turning if you do? I don't know. People have different thoughts on it. I, I think, you know, if it's a rare example, leave it as it is. If it's not so rare, it's kind of your rifle. You know, do what you want with it, as long as you don't destroy it. I prefer to see these rifles sh kept shooting rather than anything else. Um, they're fine old weapons and they need to be used in the uh, way that they were intended to be uh, in my book. And this rifle gets quite a lot of use. Uh, on the range uh, mainly I don't hunt with this particular rifle uh, I, I use it on the range but I do use it a lot and I reload my own ammunition for it so the stock might look surprisingly good and that is because it is look at that stock look at that wood it's amazing it really is good now the reason it's so good is because it was made two years ago it wasn't made in 1940 along with a rifle it was made two years ago by a company in Italy uh, and I'll have to find that company's name and I'll post a link so that you can um, use them if you need to uh, buy any woodwork furniture for your surplus rifles. As far as I can remember, they make surplus wood for the Enfields. I think they make it for Garands and M1s and K98s. When I bought the stock, I thought it's going to take quite a lot of fitting. While I was waiting for it to come from Italy, I thought, you know, this is going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be here with my file and my, uh, and my woodworking tools for quite some time. And you know what? When I got the rifle, I just put the receiver in it, tightened it all up and it absolutely fitted. It was amazing. The fit and finish on these, these stocks is absolutely cracking. It's really good. So there's a few other things that I did with the rifle as well. Uh, having got a nice new stock on it, I, um, I'd i always got a, an idea that I wanted to get a sniper, uh, as a lot of people do, and I wanted to get it done properly. So um, I, uh, I set about finding a good gunsmith who would uh, do a great job on this scope. And indeed I found one. I would, off, I would say, if you're going to, if you're going to do this find somebody who really really knows what they're doing because if you do you'll get a great job and the quality the quality of this is amazing i was so pleased with it uh the scope itself is actually a gecko it's a gecko scope can you see that g there at the bottom by the eye by the eye the eye end of the scope as it was yeah it's a vintage gecko and it's kind of probably a few years post-war but near enough to give the real sense of what this scope looked like 
and as you can see it's a short rail side mount okay so that is a reproduction mount uh, you'd be very lucky to find one of those um, in existence they are around but god you'd be lucky so that's a that's a, that's actually a, a reproduction it's a really good one um, and they work well and uh, yeah uh, as you can see it really sets it off nicely really pleased with the uh, really pleased with the uh, the finished rifle so um, anything more to say about this rifle well firstly it's great fun to shoot eight millimeter mauser is a big cartridge not big in some terms some people say eight millimeter mauser no that's a mouse of a cartridge well you know for most people eight millimeter mauser is a pretty 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 strong cartridge so you've got to have the gun locked into your shoulder and you've got to i suppose know what you're doing in terms of shooting um it is a joy to shoot i can shoot this all day long without a single issue some people will kind of sport bruises on the shoulders and say oh no no it's a, a nightmare to shoot well you know what you're probably not holding the gun properly you probably don't know what you're doing um, and learn to shoot because if you learn to shoot you'll find that actually you'll be fine with it the action on this rifle is surprisingly good um it's it's an old gun but i don't think it was shot very much it's you know it's it's smooth and clean and it works well now the mouse has had a feature for those of you that don't know that if you pull the belt back when you put your last cartridge in what happens is you will not be able to put it forward it's jammed there the idea is you're on battlefield and you're in a situation where you run out of ammunition you do not want to be pointing an empty rifle at an enemy and finding that you've not got a bullet in it so the idea is bang that hits that stop there time to reload so you reload now obviously if you've got a scope on top like this you can't reload using a conventional stripper clips it's one at a time so that's something to think about uh, you can take the scope off it's got a release here on the mount i personally keep this on nearly all the time because i've got it zeroed i don't want to mess around with it and i know it's accurate so i'll leave it as it is um the sling that you see on this rifle is a complete and utter copy and some people in the past when it's been on the internet have said get rid of that fake sling wall you know why get rid of that fake sling it's fine it works it's good so as far as the whole thing goes i'm really pleased with it i like shooting it and it's my gun so i'll do pretty much what i want with it and I'm quite satisfied that whoever gets it after me when I die or when I choose to sell it is going to find it the same as me, an absolute joy to shoot. So if you are interested in Mausers, I would advise that you get one pretty quickly because the prices are going up. At one point, these Russian captures were quite affordable. You could pick them up all over the place and people really didn't want to know because they're Russian captures, they're mismatched. And why would anybody want a mismatched rifle? Well... The point is, a, mis a mismatched rifle is still a ma it's still a K98. It's still a rifle in its pretty much original configuration, albeit with mismatched parts. But really, if you're going to use it down the range, who cares? It shoots, you know, and that's what's important. And actually, these Russian captures, in their own right, they've got a place in history. They went through the war. They did. They saw what they saw, and you know they 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 were built in this mismatch way post war or during the, the late war, and they've got their own story to tell. So don't knock them. Prices are going up even for these uh, Russian captures. You'll find that prices, you know, now are a, a lot more than they were even five years ago. So I would jump on the uh, I would jump on and get one of these if you are looking for a Mauser. Um, the other thing to bear in mind with these is parts are still fairly plentifully available. I needed a new ejector spring on this uh, rifle and it took me about three minutes on the internet to find a place. And that's in the UK that had got these. And I ordered one and I had it in my gun within three days, three or four days. So, you know, parts are relatively available. You can find all the bits you need. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're still plentifully available if you need anything for them. So you can keep them shooting, keep them in good order. Um, eight millimeter Mauser is a good hunting cartridge. Uh, it will take a deer down easily. It will take down pretty, pretty much anything, to be honest. It's a, it's a stout old load, uh, but I find it on the range. It is, uh, just a cracking cartridge to shoot. Um, I think this is a gun that any 
any good shooter, any committed shooter, particularly anybody interested in military or surplus or, you know, the war, it's kind of one of those rifles. It's a bit like a Garand or a Lee Enfield or an M1 or an Arisaka, if you're that way inclined. You know, it's one of those rifles you've kind of just got to own. And uh, if you invest in one, I can guarantee you won't be disappointed. So thanks for listening to that. I know I ramble a bit, but it's something I'm passionate about and I enjoy talking about it. And I enjoy sharing these videos with you. So if you want to offer a like, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see in the future. See you soon.